you know, it's important to realise they will happen because yep. it, is, it is hard to handle and we've seen it across the board. No, definitely. The, the best thing in training is if you get Shumi to carry the ball before you because he's the sweatiest sweat. man you've ever seen. <laughs> you've ever, you don't need never a bucket seen. of soapy water. Eh? No, you don't need Just the soapy water. Screen. Give the ball. Like, honestly, boys are saying like every time they drop it in training, it's because Shumi's carried it before them. <laughs> That's the excuse that's going around anyway. But. Well, welcome to the official Scottish Rugby Podcast on tour. On tour? This is nice, Gil, oh, isn't hey. it? We've spent time in some worse places than this, <laughs> exactly. uh, Mossy. Mm. So, yeah, no, beautiful and, uh, day here in uh, Nice, or, well, Sofia and Top It's nice. pretty special. We're here. It's the, we have some context. It's the morning after. Obviously, we played Tonga. We're building up to Romania on, on Saturday coming. And you're still in base camp uh, in Sofia and Tipolis, just outside Nice, as you say. Um, and, yeah, well, I think we'll look back at the game yesterday, yep. it's all important, but obviously we've got to look ahead to Romania and World Cup experiences, new personal experiences as well, but it's a tough old game that, wasn't it, yesterday against Tom? I know you were non-23, yeah. but you've played in those <clears> games. <throat> Scotland needed to get a win, they needed to get a bonus point win, and they did that against tough opposition. What was your what was your summation for the sideline? Yeah, well, that first 20 minutes was exactly what we expected. Um, I don't think we got any surprises from what we what we got from Tonga. They, they were some world-class individuals and... The way they tackle, the way they hit, um, we saw that throughout the game. Um, but no, I thought I thought we we were a, a big step in the right direction yesterday. Still work to be done. I think we left quite a lot out there. Um, but that's you know a lot to do with the opposition yep. where we where we are in the tournament. That's not necessarily a bad thing for us either to know that we need to be better. But mm -hmm. it's it's about building now. Um, you know, going into this week and then then obviously on to the, the big one. I think a lot's been made of Scotland's ability to play, to play well, to score good tries, and, and quite often you read, we're searching for this 80-minute performance, but what you said there, not many teams get an 80-minute performance because of the level of opposition, and at times I think there was an erratic nature to Tonga yesterday in terms of the defence, and you have to respect that, of course you do, but that can sometimes be harder to play against than, a, say, a fast press from South Africa that's more, it's still really quick, but it's quite uniform. Yeah. How hard is it when you're out there to expect unexpected but still deliver and stick to the structures under pressure yeah I think it's a lot about decision making and, and at times you know you're not going to get 80 minutes where you get every yeah. decision in a game of rugby right um, you know right across the game you know even looking at, at you know area game I look closer like the, in the line out mm -hmm. they were as erratic as they were in defence yeah. you know they were just putting random pods in there so no structure changing no, every yeah, time changing every you time. have to think on your feet in the game and and at times you know they're going to get it right yeah. and and we saw that with the way they tackled as well you know yeah. they're flying out of line or biting in on players but yeah. at times you know you get a decision slightly wrong um, it puts you under pressure but I think what we want to make sure is when those things happen is that we recycle the ball and, and we take the next opportunity or or if things do go wrong uh, that's fine yeah. in a game of rugby that's it's about it's, it's gonna happen yeah and, and it's how you can bounce back from those errors or even within the sets if, we, if maybe something doesn't quite work look for the next opportunity which could be different and, and a lot of it is decision making so um yeah no i, I think that's a good um a good way of looking at it you're not necessarily going to get every decision right in 80 yeah. minutes, you definitely aren't. Yeah. But how do you respond to things not quite going well? And, and that's, that's and I key. thought that was good yesterday, actually, because I thought we started reasonably well and then we fell about 10 7 behind. And I thought the response to losing that first try or, or the losing to Trong's first try was excellent, stuck to yeah. structures. And, and there was pressure on you, of course. You hadn't played for 14 days. Um, but you're properly in the thick of action now, going from a 14-day turnaround to a six-day turnaround with a recovery day, with a travel day. Um, it'll feel like you're properly engrossed in the World Cup this week as we yeah, look ahead to the that's, that's what we're wanting. Yeah, you know, like, I think the players were craving it. You play against South Africa, a little bit disappointed with how yeah. we played. Some positives again, though, like the way we defended in that yeah. game. Things to build on, but the frustration was 14 days. You know, yeah. like as a player, you know, when oh, yeah. when you have a disappointment. You just want to play again, mm -hmm. and um, how do you manage that in 14 days? Because it's, it's a long time, and it, some, it, it happens in your career personally. Yeah. For you might pick up an injury or a dead leg or miss a week, but when it's all 33, not getting the ability or any of the 33, not getting to play in a fortnight, it's hard, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's hard. Um, we trained hard. Yeah, uh, that's. Um, and you'd want to as a player. Uh, yeah, you want I to think, fill the gap. You need that yeah. physical release. Eh? Yeah, we 
I'd say, you know, the three days training we had were up there with anything yeah. we'd done in the pre-season. Mm -hmm. um, we're here in the heat, um, but also we've got 33 guys that are ready to play mm -hmm. test match rugby, not in that pre-season mode where it's maybe a bit more conditioning based. Mm -hmm. You know, we had proper physical days, big set piece days. Um, and that's I suppose the only thing you can do is get that load into you that way um, and then straight away you know, put the focus on Tonga and getting getting the performance right. With a six day turnaround and the travel to you know to contend with this week, did any of you focus on Romania towards the end of last week? Um, I had a little bit of look, obviously I wasn't playing yeah, yeah. Um, and hoping to be involved this weekend so yeah. um, certainly the line out wise you love a line anyway. You would do that nah, anyway, Gilco. Okay. Anyway, that's just a wee bit. <laughs> but we, me and um, John, had a look at Romania uh -huh. um, at the tail end of the week. Um, let the guys focus on the game, and then let them focus on recovery yeah. today. And I'll, I'll get a head start, and and then we meet up later on tonight. I can, I can kind of lead on on quite a lot of stuff. So I assume there'll be a bit of that across the team and the guys that that weren't involved. Um, but yeah, we're there's so many of us who now. You know, if you played against South Africa, guys who haven't played at yeah. all, so itching, uh, yeah. itching to get on with, with playing this weekend. And I know, you know, from personally, I'm you know, really excited about the week ahead and uh, getting up to Lille and, and playing again. And what has to go right on the field for, for the, you know, the requirement is a, is a hopefully a win with a bonus point. Yeah, well, I think we got to look at it. can we be better than we were at the weekend? Yes. Yeah, good. Um, Regardless of oppos opposition, you know they've had two weeks off. Yeah. They've played a couple of games at a higher level than they've played recently. Mm -hmm. I think this is the best position they'll be in to put in a big performance. You know they've had that little bit of experience, loads of learning in the games they've played so far, and then they've had a bit of a break to recover. So we expect them to be physical, be really well prepared because they've had two weeks to to look at us. So we we need to be better than we were at the weekend. Um, I think you know really focusing on ourselves. Um, being a better version of ourselves, um, contact area and attack, um, you know, really growing our defence, making sure we don't get too greedy too early on mm -hmm. both sides of the ball. I think that was creeped in a little bit yesterday. Not not a lot, but second half, a, yeah, a wee bit. Like mm -hmm. we, we can take an extra phase yeah. if our contact works really good and we get lightning quick ball. Mm -hmm. It's fine to take another phase. We don't need to force the pass, and then the other side of the ball, like making sure it's just two in the contact. We yeah. don't need to try and get just to the be ball. disciplined, isn't it? Yeah, you like trying. Right. We looked maybe a wee bit like we saw opportunities, and yeah. we were trying to take them a wee bit too early on both sides of the ball. And just being patient, sticking to the system, and wait, waiting for the right opportunity. And if we can do that against Romania, um, I've no doubt we'll, we'll get the job done. And also, it's a, it's a big learning, a bigger picture, and becoming the best version of us, um, which is you know. How, how patient we can be, how ruthless we can be, um, which we're going to need when you play against the top, top nations. We've yeah. seen that against South Africa. Yeah. We have three or four chances in the whole game. We don't take any, mm. you, you get three points, that's it. Um, Did you watch that game on Saturday night, the South Africa yeah. Island? Did you watch it as a squad here? Yeah, we watched it here. Uh, it's a dead test, eh? yeah, it's a proper test test match. yeah, proper test match. But what you're saying there in terms of what has to be right against Romania is exactly what has to be right Against Ireland. Against Ireland. Yeah, it's we, in your control. It's it's it, it's it's exactly as you're saying. You're you're resisting the temptation to go early. If you see half a gap, you stick with your system. Yeah. You stick with your structure. And when it's a proper gap, you execute. Hundred percent. That's and that's going to be so important because when you get to Ireland, the opportunities aren't going to be. You're going to have to properly. Earn, work them, eh? You're going to have to properly earn your opportunities. And when you get them, if you want to win the game, you're going to have to take mm -hmm. them. You don't get 10, 10 attempts to like we. we you know, in the game yesterday, mm -hmm. we could leave three or four out there and we won the game comfortably. We know that they come that island game, having ex having had that experience against South Africa as well, mm -hmm. where we did create chances, mm -hmm. maybe not some some clear cut, some less clear cut. Mm -hmm. But when we watch back at it, we think like there's chances in that game for us, but we didn't take them, and that's where we're going to have to be really ruthless come come the island game. I'd agree because when I went back to the game, I know it jumped back to South Africa. But after their second try, I thought we found a bit of attacking shape. That when I was at the game initially, I didn't feel as if we got. I felt as if we were probably further away. But there was definitely attacking shape, and we saw again the weekend that they can threaten it and yep. get right. So we'll uh, we'll deal with Romania the weekend and look ahead to Ireland next week. But in mentioning that six day turnaround around on field, making it feel more like being in the you know right in the teeth of a World Cup when you're moving, you're packing up, yep. you're playing another game. That's also the same. 
I suppose the off-field experience of the World Cup yep. with fans, the support at Nice uh, and Marseille's been incredible. Well, It'll be the same in Lille. What what what's your experience? Oh, it's been so good. Uh, I mean, what what a World Cup to be part of. You know, over here, I think the French have done an amazing job. Like playing in France, you know, it's a special place to come and play, regardless whether you're playing for your club. I mean, playing for Edinburgh over here, or um, you know, playing in, in test matches against the French. But this World Cup has been. Everything that we thought was going to be and the home support, uh, the travel, yeah, and the travel support as well. I mean, it felt like a home game yesterday. Yeah. It was awesome to see that stadium, you know, filled with Scottish fans, um, really vocal, really behind the the team, and that's going to be really important for us come yeah. the big uh, Romania the, the weekend. The Irish and the yeah. weeks team as well, well isn't exactly. It? <laughs> well, we warm up Paris. against Romania. <laughs> I know, get the singing voices, get the voices ready. Have you been able to get out and about and see? And obviously, family have been in and around especially through that that 14 day break but in terms of fans when you've been out and about in the streets have you felt that support off field as well or been able to bump in and have a blast I've bumped into people from Alwa your hometown <laughs> Bo at both no the doubt yeah, they're, they're not asking for you everywhere. <laughs> they're not asking for you but you get that kind of home from home feeling have you experienced that out with the rugby if you've been out in this for a wander or yeah or a little coffee? bit we are a little bit away here yeah. Which I suppose has its has its pros and cons. Like you yeah. say, it's nice when you're down into on table or you're in in Nice. You're bumping into a bit more of the supporters, interacting with them, um, which is nice and it makes you feel like oh we're at a World yeah. Cup. But also when we're out here uh, for large spells of it, it kind of feels like it's just us and yeah. we're able to concentrate and there isn't uh, it doesn't feel like there's that many distractions. You know we're we're here to do a job. At the end of the day, we, we want to enjoy ourselves. We want to feel that excitement around the tournament. But the main the main thing for us is that we, we get our weeks right, we get our preparation right, and we we perform on the weekends. And the base here is really good at being able to do that. Just being that little bit further away, you can dip in and out of it. But when we get back up here, it's it's a really good place to just chill and then to go to work. I'm beginning to think how you'll cope with the potential. Dropping temperature when we go to oh, Lille. Oh, uh, man, I absolutely love it. Be, the scrum can't be going back on <laughs> oh, we'll if it's a wee bit cooler. <laughs> well, we'll see if it's, it's hot above 15 degrees. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm starting to get a wee bit more acclimatised to it, but Marseille was hot and yeah. it was, it's, well, you know, it's like here, even at the week, it was better, it felt better maybe second half last night, yeah. it was still warm and yeah. um, like, like there's quite a lot of humidity here as well, which has been good because training's been tough. We were training in the heat of the day every day, which which is good for us because, you know, hopefully come the games now or at night, we, yeah. we're not going to face that same heat or um, exertion. And it's not just the, the physical aspect of that as well, and I don't want to make excuses, but you see it across the board, like actually handling the ball in that humidity and, and heat is hard, isn't yeah, it? it? We've seen difficult. a lot of handling errors. On the field, you're aware of that happening. Is there anything you do at training? I mean, we used to talk about having three points of contact, the ball, where's your hand, your elbow, squeezing the ball against you. These are all little things you go work on training in the heat, but, you know, it's important. To realise they will happen because yep. it is it is hard to handle. You know, seeing it across the board. No, definitely. The the best thing in training is if you get Shumi to carry the ball before you because <laughs> he's the sweatiest sweat. man you've ever seen. <laughs> you've ever you don't need never seen. Soapy water, eh? No, you don't need Just the soapy the water. Give the ball. Like honestly, boys are saying like every time they drop it in training, it's because Shumi's carried it before them. <laughs> that's the excuse that's going around anyway. But um, ah, like the good things with training, heat, with training, yeah, sweat the whole time, it. so you're getting used to it, but. At times it does affect the game, and um, sometimes just acknowledging that's the right thing yeah. to do. And maybe you do need to kick a little bit more. You need mm. to take a little bit more depth to mm. catch. You don't want to be catching too many balls at the line mm. when it is like that. Um, like you say, hopefully with our next two games, there shouldn't be that issue. We're playing nine o'clock at night, and up in the north where it should be a wee bit cooler, a bit more closer to home. Not quite Alaba, but we'll see. <laughs> it's not that far away. Um, listen. Build up to Romania, I know there'll be a big focus on that and, and, and everybody, maybe some players getting the first opportunity to experience Rugby World Cup as well, which it's a big focus, so we wish you well with that. But just before we stop, I think it's, it's really important to, to touch on someone, you know, ultimately much sadder. Yeah. Stuart McAnally has had to retire, he's had to re retire home from injury. Such a brilliant person as a, as a rugby player and, and to be around the squad. And I know there was an emotional exchange yesterday um, but for 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 people to experience the warmth and affection for Rambo underlines what this squad's about, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, it can be it can be really cruel this yeah. game, can't it? Yeah. Like, um, obviously we were 
gutted for another one of my mates and, and Ches who mm -hmm. had to go home early. Um, but it felt right that somebody as good a person as Rams, mm -hmm. what he's given to all of us, you know, I think you could ask anyone in the squad. Um, the empathy and care that he shows for his teammates is something I've never seen in anybody else. Other people have got that quality, but not to the extent that he had. And um, everybody, you know, was absolutely delighted that you know he was going to get his 50th cap and and the swan song to his career that it deserved. Um, but sometimes Sport. life's not fair, and uh, it did feel. It was tough yesterday yeah. for everyone. Was it after all, the match? Yeah, after the, the yeah, yeah, after the match, we done in the change rooms, um, and yeah, it, it was tough because I think for him and for the rest of us, who you know, I feel fortunate that that I've got to share the field and mm -hmm. share teams with him um, so much because um, I believe that me as a person and I'm a better person because I've spent so much time with Rambo. Uh, I'm definitely a better rugby player because I've spent time with him and. Uh, yeah, just that finale of it, like that would be the last time he was in a Scotland dressing room and um, I think it hit everyone, especially him, because I know through, you know, that a, a couple of leave speeches for him, one at Edinburgh, um, where, you know, I was struggling to keep it together and he stood up and gave this like perfect speech and uh, inspiring the next generation, no emotion at all, it was like, Christ, but um Yesterday, you could see it really hit home to him. And you know what and hits that is the surrounding. Like you, you mentioned, in touching it there, it's the it's the Scottish changing room. Yeah. Sometimes delivering these kind of speeches and looking ahead it is easier in a, a neutral venue, for you a better phrase, a, a function. Yeah. Or whatever. But yeah. when you're in a national changing room and you feel the special emotion and the connection, it's it's sad. But he won't want us um, kind of no. feeling sorry for him no, because it, 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 his achievements. As a player and as a person, phenomenal. And you know what? You said something there that almost underlines it. It's sport. Yeah. No matter how much data and numbers and training and preparation, it's cruel. Yeah. Sport's cruel. And it means you make every moment, the most of every moment you're in. And I assume Rambo's message would be part of that. He would yeah. be inspiring you guys to make the, the most of you know, Saturday, the next moment you're in, and every moment you're in Scotland jersey. Yeah, 100%. I think that's, that's the thing that lasts with all of us. Like, we're in such a privileged position. Like, just don't take anything for granted um, and yeah like I say he's got so much to be proud of <clears throat> I know he would have loved to, to get the 50 caps but in the grand scheme of things it's just it's, it's, one, times. it's one more cap yeah. it, it doesn't it seems to mean it means it looks like it means more than it does what he gave in those 49 caps what he's given throughout his career is, is something to be immensely proud of and I know he will be and, and it's, to me that's just a number it's just a, yeah. a state totally agree. totally agree but he'll be cheering on and he'll be cheering yeah the squad on on Saturday, so good luck uh, in Lille oh, thanks, uh, for, for Romania. Uh, as you say, it's a physical challenge. You need to meet the, the levels of physicality, which you will rise above that. Get the execution and and keep this uh, keep this rugby cup on the road with, with the performances delivered. Spawn, cheers, Marcy. Thanks, Gil Cole.